Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome to FC Midweek, your Wednesday opportunity to connect and engage with your Foundation Church community. I'm here hanging out with my kitty cat, Dottie, while we edit this week's footage. If you don't know, we've got a subscriber challenge going on. That link will be in the description below so you can check out what's at stake there. And uh, before we go any further, I have a message from myself in the future. Hey everybody, this is Future Bobby. I love the new hairdo that I have. Uh, it, with the weather getting hot, it is so much better. Thank you all for subscribing to the YouTube channel so that I too can enjoy summer. Because now I get to enjoy this. <laughs> I do you get to enjoy summer. So good. <laughs> well done. Hey everyone, uh, this is Michael Ballard, our youth director here at Foundations Church. And May 3rd, they are doing something really awesome that I am specifically excited as a parent about. Um, something called technical difficulties. We're talking about your kid's cell phone and just social media presence and internet usage. And so Michael, kind of tell us what it's going to be about. Yeah, there is a huge generational difference from even when I was in high school uh, to what teenagers are facing now. Um, it used to be pagers and notes in lockers and now it's Snapchats and like selfies, you know? And so it's, uh, it's just a big difference. And with that um, comes a lot of challenges. Uh, when I grew up, we had one computer and it was in my parents' room. Um, and now when you think about it, uh, if your teenagers have a smartphone, they have a computer in their pocket wherever they go. And so yeah. um, it's a big challenge. And my wife and I have been doing a lot of research um, at taking surveys uh, from here with our teenagers at church, looking at national surveys. And uh, we've, we've got some interesting things uh, that we've uncovered and um, some kind of eye-opening um, dangers and uh, benefits as well that are, that are there um, that you can use with technology. But, I know there's a big learning curve and uh, it's changing, you know, every six weeks, every month, and uh, we've got to stay on top of it. And so we see this as a great opportunity to help equip parents with yeah. uh, the tools they need to be proactive in keeping their, their kids safe. Parents, I will tell you, you can't just be reactive. It's time for us to stop playing defense and be on the offensive and be proactive. And so invite your friends, invite your parent friends to be here. It's all for you so that we can do what's best for our kids because we love them. We're not just trying to be nosy, we're trying to protect them and really be really wise as far as it comes to technology. So don't miss this May 3rd at 7 p.m. here at Foundation Church. Please, please join us. We'll see you on May 3rd. Let's go guys, this is awesome! Hello everyone. <laughs> Church, you are visiting us here on midweek, and this last Sunday, Justin talked about the elephant in the room, part one, which was dealing with conflict. Um, there's a lot to talk about there, so let's jump right into it. Um, can you give us a little quick overview of what you talked about? Yeah, you know, I just conflict is just a major thing that we deal with. It yeah. is a, it's just going to be part of the, our life. It's going to be part of our relationships. Yeah. It's going to be part of our work life, our home life, and unfortunately. Yeah, nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody really wants to deal with conflict for the most part. There are people out there that don't mind conflict. Yeah. Um, but for the majority of us, we, we, we kind of stumble through it. Mm -hmm. um, and and kind of how do you handle that is kind of really set up the rest of your life. It's really going to make for really great relationships yeah. or it's going to hurt your relationships. It's going to really make... The future road smoother or it's going to make the future road really bumpy and you're going to have a lot of regret and so yeah. kind of how we deal with conflict really determines the path our life takes um, and for a lot of us we just avoid conflict yeah we avoid we just want to stick our head in the sand i remember one of my friend my one of my best friends growing up when i was a small kid um man he just fell off the deep end mm -hmm. And uh, his parents just refused to deal with it. And no, it's not you, Corey. But um, it's one of just, but his parents just stuck their head in the sand. Yeah. Everybody knew about it in the youth ministry, other parents, everybody. Yeah. But no, nobody wanted to deal with it. And as a result, he went in left field and his life is still kind of a mess right now. Yeah. And it's, it's, 
it's just sad because somebody should have had the hard conversation with right. them. You know what I'm saying? Is to talk about, and we talked about it, uh, jo- uh, God charging Joshua, be yeah. strong and courageous. And then Paul, you know, encouraging us as followers of Christ to speak the truth in love. Yeah. Is to have the courage to speak the truth in love. That's tough. Um, especially when it's somebody you really do love. Yeah, when they're closer, it's even harder. Yeah, because I mean, you can you can have confrontation sometimes in a workplace mm-hmm. a little bit easier than you can with a friend or with right. a loved one. But if you really do love them and you love the person, you care for the person more than their feelings, and you yeah. will have the strength and the courage like Joshua to speak the truth yeah. in love. And so that was kind of our whole gamut wrapped up in a teeny tiny five minute box there we go there you have it we're done oh just kidding um what happens so i've definitely been on the end where you have a conflict and you do the right thing you step out and you kind of rip that band-aid off open up the subject but then there's still not a clear resolution yeah like there's still like there's still hurt feelings or there's still like you both are still on separate points that you both still stick by how do you like continue a relationship with that person if that person is going to constantly be in your life? Yeah, like, if it's not an option for them to to avoid them. Yeah, I think no matter yeah. the conflict, there's going to be awkwardness afterwards a little bit, even yeah. if it's with my wife or it's your husband that yeah. you have conflict, or a parent, or a kid, or a friend. There's going to be a little bit of awkwardness um, that it just takes time to heal and you work through and you realize, Hey, I've moved on. You can move on and I'm not holding this grudge and you, and we're going to talk about that a lot this next week about what do you do when you're the elephant, you know, when, (laughs) when you're the one receiving the correction, how do you handle being the elephant in the room? We, but how do you handle that? We're going to cover that. But I would just say, I I think it's just continuing to love that person. Mm -hmm. Um, I think of the relationship, you know, we came out of a series, called the strong man in the circus and yeah. the tagline was not my monkeys not my circus right. like not my people not my problems yeah. not my issues um and i think as adults you really get to control the drama that is yeah. in your life to a certain degree um, right to, to a certain point you if, if your your spouse is bringing drama in you don't get to control that you have to deal with that if your True. kids are bringing drama in, you don't get to control that you have to deal with it but Friends, you get to control the amount of drama. You know, coworkers, you get to. Co- and I would say, if somebody's consistently bringing drama in your life, and yeah. you've you've done the part of speaking conflict and speaking truth and love, and you've loved them and you've shown them the way, mm-hmm. um, I think that's when, like, when Jesus talks about it. I believe it's in Matthew 18. I believe. Let me let me check two yeah. seconds. Um, but. Yeah, it's Matthew 18 where Jesus says, man, if you have a conflict with somebody and they don't listen and you've gone to them in private and talked to them about it, yeah, it is, and that's key. Go to in private, mm-hmm. talk to them, this don't the text step. them, don't email them, yeah. go meet with them in private, don't do it in front of everybody, but you've done that and they don't receive it, that's when you need to take somebody else yeah. with you. And, and not as backup, but as maybe somebody wiser. You know, maybe somebody that you have a relation, all, all of you have a relationship yeah. with that can kind of mediate and help navigate through those hard feelings and those hurt feelings. An, um, an unbiased point of view, kind yeah, of. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I mean, it's very scriptural. It's very, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just a wise thing to do. And I think it's just what you kind of have to do is, is to help bring somebody in that you both respect, yeah. that you both know are for you uh, more than is 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 uh, concerned about your feelings they're concerned about you as the person yeah. so that that's what i would do honestly i think i think that's the the biblical thing to do too is just bring somebody in it with you to have that conflict resolution mm-hmm. moment so i oh hope that answered the question yes i believe okay. it does um and also what happens whenever um maybe sometimes whenever you don't come to a resolution if that relationship ends, um, how do you step in forgiveness even if that relationship has ended? Mm. Like, I know a lot of times I'll go back and relive something or, you know, with social media, it's hard to forgive people because they pop up something on your Facebook feed and you're going, that's not how you are in real life, yeah. you know? You Lock them! Yeah, Lock there you go. Lock them. Eliminate them. I will every show you. ounce of them in your I life. I just erased you from social media. Take that. Um, 
No, but how do you do how do you how do you take those steps of forgiveness even if that person is not willing to do that? Yeah, I that is a good question and it's something every single person deals with. Yeah. Um and I think it is something I, I I think a lot of times we're waiting to forgive somebody until they deserve it or they mm -hmm. ask for it. Yeah. And that's not what Jesus told us to do. Gosh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's <laughs> not there's going to be people, some people don't even know they've hurt your feelings. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people who have unforgiveness in their life and they've got hurt feelings, the other person doesn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't right. mean or they the were extent. right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean that they were right in what they do, but maybe they're just ignorant that they d in what they did to you. And I think if you're waiting to feel like forgiving somebody, you're never going to forgive somebody. You yeah. never feel like forgiving somebody, you discipline yourself there yeah. to forgiving somebody. Um, you know, and, and discipline and just, man, being a, a person that is just responsible and is disciplined in their life, you don't wait for the feelings, you move despite the feelings. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of forgiveness. Um, there's been a lot of times um, the man, you just you get your feelings hurt. I've had my feelings hurt. There's been people that have hurt me uh, man, deeply, you know, me and Casey, and they never asked for my forgiveness. Yeah. They never, they never, asked, but man, I didn't want to live with all this resentment. Mm -hmm. And all, every time I saw their face, mm -hmm. like, you know, when I was a little kid, um, this is a bad, bad confession right now. <laughs> but when I would get my yearbook back in elementary school, every kid I didn't like, I would put like devil horns on or I would cross <laughs> their face out. Um, that's literally like, if you go to my, uh, if you go to my little back in the day when they were the Bovers Beavers instead of Bovers Bobcats um, for, yes, for <laughs> Union, hilarious. they would, I, my yearbook's got little devil horns on people <laughs> and like, yes, all kinds of things. That's why. So don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. That's not good. Okay. But, you know, you just got to discipline yourself to be there because it's, yeah. there's, it's not going to happen. And you're going to be dealing with an elephant in your room and in your life and you're going to walk through it and every time you see that person it's going to bring up bad feelings every time you see that person it's going to hurt your feelings yeah and i would just say this it's out of proverbs um and it's it's chapter 12 verses 14 through 18 it says this wise words bring many benefits and hard work brings rewards it's hard to forgive mm -hmm. you know but fools think their own way is right but the wise listen to others. A fool is quick-tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. An honest mm -hmm. witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. It's so good. Yeah. And then verse, four, verse 18 says, Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. And I would say this. Are your words bringing healing or are they bringing cutting remarks? You know, are you listening to others? Uh, are you being quick-tempered? Are you staying calm when you're insulted? Um, or do you think you're only right? Are you the person that thinks your own way is right? Or are you willing to listen to others? And that's the challenge. Um, that's the really tough part of dealing with the elephant in the room is making sure that every time you're addressing the conflict, you're addressing the issue, you're bringing healing. So you need to think about the words before you speak the words. Don't have thoughtless words come out of your mouth because most of the time those words aren't wise and they're not healing. But if we can think and if we can pray about the words that are coming out of our mouths, my prayer for you this week is that it brings healing, that it brings restoration, and it allows you to move on despite the conflict that you might have had to deal with this past week. Hey, we are so glad that you joined us here um, at Midweek at FC here at Foundations Church. Please do this for us. Make sure you subscribe and you like us right at this link below and tune in and be with us this Sunday as we continue our series, Elephant in the Room, Week Dose. We will see you guys next week. Cut. Perfect. <coughs> Done. This is really fun. I like it. <laughs> it's really like... Yeah.